Hey everyone, back again with another judo video, but this time in my apartment because like many people, I'm sort of stuck not having access to my judo facility. My club has been closed down until things improve. Um, don't have access to the typical equipment I might have, like bands and whatnot, and I don't have access to my partners. And many of you are probably dealing with the same thing. If you're anywhere on this planet, right, as of this recording, you're frustrated, you're stir crazy, you're looking for things that you can do. How can you exercise at home? How can you drill at home? And so it seemed fitting to share this particular one that also deals with certain principles that people might not think about in judo. And it's good for beginners. It's also good for people who are a little bit more experienced. I actually know brown belts, maybe even some black belts who have never been exposed to what I'm talking about here. And what I'm talking about is the taisabaki. Now the word tai means body. And so the taiatoshi is a body drop throw. Well, taisabaki generally refers to the sort of body management or management of body movement, these techniques or these principles that guide that. Uh, the exact translation will vary and I'm not here to go on and on about that. Uh, but that's a basic concept. You're basically moving your body and setting up for entries or attacks or setting up for retreats, for evasions, that sort of thing. I'm gonna show a couple versions here. It's not going to be exhaustive. There are a million different versions of this that you can do, but hopefully you find it valuable and it gives you something that you can do and all you need is a little bit of floor, a little patch of floor here. So I'm gonna set this up. I apologize for not having a little bit more space. I'm just stuck in my apartment, which is not a very big place. But if I can set this up just right, I want you to have a view of my feet. So I need a few feet of that ground in front of my door so you can see where my feet are going. Let's see if that works. So, and you can just barely see my face in the frame here, but the important thing is to see what my feet are doing. Okay, I may actually adjust the camera again. So again, the taisabaki is really just a collection of different things you can do to set up your movement or, or your throws or your evasions and things like that. I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but from a beginner perspective, one of the first things you'll learn how to do or should learn how to do is to advance or to enter. So if you're moving forward on somebody, you're going to be coming in with something of a defensive posture. And when I, when I say defensive posture, I mean you're postured in a way that they can't immediately throw you very easily or immediately compromise your balance. So if there's a person in front of me, I'm going to put my foot, my front foot here, my back foot here. So I'm not standing square. If I'm standing like this and a person yanks me forward, I fall forward very easily. Right? I don't have a very deep base of support in this direction. So if a person pulls me forward, they can bring my center of gravity forward in front of my feet very easily. So I have to step or I start to fall. Now, what I'm doing basically, if I have one foot in front and another foot behind, if somebody pulls me this way, I have this front foot, it's like a strut or like a pole in the ground I can push off of to push myself back. If somebody tries to push me back, I have the rear foot that I can use to push myself forward. So I can respond to these front and back perturbations more easily. That's the idea behind this position, or one of the big ones. So I set myself up here. My hands are up in this sort of hand swords position, conventionally in many cases, though it's not the only way you can set your hands up. And when I step, I'm practicing initiating with the front leg. So I'm gonna step here. It's kind of like a fencer's step. You also see this in other art martial arts, and indeed, taisabakis are used in a lot of Japanese arts. It's a Japanese phrase. You'll see it in Aikido and Kendo and ver certain versions of karate. You see these things. So it's not exclusive to judo, but I'm showing you one that is some versions used in judo. So if I'm moving forward, it's called a mai taisabaki. Right there. Right there. Okay? And then I can also move back. In ushiro, uh, in ushiro sabaki, moving backwards here. And then that's the basic thing you can do. So you just practice one, two, somebody comes at you, one, two. Notice I'm initiating with, you, with whichever foot is closer to the direction I'm moving in. If I'm moving forward, I start the movement with my forward foot pulling forward. If I'm moving backward, I start with my rear foot to kind of pull or step backwards, okay? so. That's a linear one. That's a very easy, simple, linear thing that you can do. And of course you would mirror it on the other side. Forward hand, forward leg. One, two, three, four. Okay? 
Now I'm showing it in kind of a stiff, stilted way. When people are actually engaging, they may be leaning over a little bit, you know, see something more like this. Maybe the hand's a little lower. Maybe they're, you know, reaching. They're doing other stuff. But the basic principle is here. And you'll hear a lot of people say, don't cross your feet. You'll hear that a lot from, you know, when beginners are on the mat in a competition and they're being coached by somebody more experienced. The more experienced person will say, don't cross your feet. Why? If I cross my feet here, um, I'm often allowing myself to be tipped over. I can compromise my balance. There are times to cross your feet, but you don't want to just walk towards a person crossing your feet that way. Okay. All right, moving on. The next one is a turning, and the word for this is mawari uh, sabaki, or my mawari, sab mawari sabaki, which is where I'm coming in forward and I'm then turning my back to my opponent. And I'll show you what I mean. In judo, we often talk about something called stepping to the top of the triangle. If I imagine that I have an opponent, and say his feet are about this wide in front of me, right? So say somebody's like three or four feet in front of me like this. Their feet are this wide. When I'm stepping in, I'm stepping somewhere in between those feet, right? Somewhere in between them to where my foot, my advancing or my initiating stepping foot will be at the top of a triangle, okay? And so you can think of this version of a tasabaki, this turning version, as being some kind of a, a way of practicing that entry. So if I'm entering for certain shoulder throws, like an Ippon Seonagi, if I'm entering for a hip throw, like an Ogoshi, which I've done a video on, well, I'm setting up with this first foot. And you can see I've already pre-turned my foot a little bit. I have to stay back so you can see my feet. One, two. And there I am. And notice I'm landing, I'm ending up with my feet kind of narrow, more so than I was here. That's because I'm setting myself up. I'm practicing this as a setup for a throw where my feet are going to be a little bit more narrow. There are times where I might want my feet to be really wide. Certain versions of Tayatoshi where I'll be either here or I'll be here in a lunge. You'll have plenty of throws where you do have a wider stance, but for some of the early ones you learn, you're setting up from this position. So I'll just do a few reps so you can watch it. One, two, three, four. Okay. So you can step and then you start turning in and you step back with the rear leg. That is by the time I'm finishing out, it's like I'm stepping backwards here with my rear leg. And then I can mirror it to the other side. So I can go left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left. Imagining that I'm stepping to the top of a triangle each time. So I may have mentioned earlier that you don't need a partner for these things, but it's good if you have one for this particular thing. So I can imagine, okay, there's, a, there's somebody standing right there. They can even exaggerate the width of their feet a little bit, give you something to target, to visualize. Lots of times with these practice movements, we're exaggerating things. We're making the movements a little bigger, making the positions a little bigger to help ourselves out. Okay. So I'm stepping in and I would have those two feet just to give me a cue. Okay. Okay. I got to step right there. Boom. So that's the first turning Taisabaki. Here's the last one I'm going to show. And this is the one that people will see me do a lot. And I'm actually going to kind of show two versions of it, but it's one basic setup. Instead of just setting up for a shoulder throw where I would be. And in fact, let me start from this way to review that previous one. Basically, I'd be stepping in one, two, and I'm setting up for my shoulder throw here, or my hip throw, if I've set up there, to come through and pull the sleeve. Well, instead of setting up that way, where I'm turning my back to my opponent, this is one where I would be stepping and having my opponent in front of me. The movement, though, the initial step's gonna look very similar. I'm coming in, one, two, but then I have a little extra movement here. One, two, boom. So if I just do it with my legs, I do two steps and then a third movement is a sweeping motion. This should look very similar. I did a uh, Diashi Harai video recently where there was a foot sweep that I did at catching somebody as they're taking their weight off of their leg. But also earlier, if I start to move my hands, this is the second version, this might look very familiar. 
Ko Uchigari. So another video, another video that I did a while back was the Ko Uchigari video where I pulled somebody through right here. Pulled through, boom. So you're practicing, in this case, keeping an opponent in front of you and then capturing a foot as it's moving. So this is a setup that I often use as a warm-up. I say often, I sometimes use as a warm-up where I'm just coming in, practicing this, and I'm making my movements a little bit bigger. You'll notice with my hands what I'm doing. I'm exaggerating this movement here where maybe I have a very high pull on somebody's lapel. And my other hand, I'm imagining I'm bringing their sleeve into their side. Or if I don't have a sleeve, I can be doing it with an open hand. I'm just kind of palming their forearm or their elbow or their wrist into their side, bringing it in here. So again, if you watch the Diashi Harai video, I tried to explain that. I might redo that video or do a follow-up to it where I show that a little more clearly, but that's what I'm doing. So I have that Diashi Harai kind of thing that I'm drilling, that I'm practicing here. I'm timing what happens with my arm, with the sleeve hand, I'm timing it with the sweeping foot. And also just doing this motion right here without the turn is a pretty good thing for you to practice. If you find that you're not really great with foot sweeps, just go through with a bunch of these. Switch to the other side. Same thing, right? And of course, I'm swinging on my busted knee here, so it doesn't feel great. But just take your time with it. Let your leg, let the side of your foot, sweep the floor here. And then you join your hands with it. Boom. Boom. And eventually, one, two, three. One, two, three. Other side. One, two, three. One, two, three. There are other variations you can do, other ways you can move your arms, but that gives you something that you can practice. You can go as fast or as slow as you like. I recommend not going so fast that you're stumbling all over the place. I think that the reason behind that should be obvious, but hopefully that gives you something to work on. All you need is a little bit of room. You see that I'm doing it just in the entryway to my apartment. I need about, to do the, a full bounding motion, maybe about six feet, not even, maybe five feet. So if you can clear that much area, say four by five or four by six, something like that, you probably have enough space to do this drill. You certainly have enough space to do the smaller versions, depending on exactly how big your steps are. If you get a partner, once we get back into the, into the dojo, we get back onto the tatami, we grab a partner and we can start doing these with our partners, okay? And then you can turn these taisabakis into uchikomis where you're actually pulling somebody and creating a full entry with it. So hopefully that's helpful. I hope that wasn't too rambly. I wanted to go through a few variations. There are a million more, but there you go. And I'm going to keep doing these and uh, yeah give you guys some more stuff to think about. And this is helping me as well because I'm going crazy here too. So I'm gonna try to keep doing videos. Take care and I will catch you all later.